Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Automating Functional and Performance Tests in Jenkins CI Environments. Um, my name is Jason Silberman, I'm at BlazeMeter. Uh, I will introduce this to our two presenters in a moment. I just want to go over a couple of house, uh, house uh, rules first. Uh, a couple of things. Um, firstly, this session is being recorded today. And everybody who has registered for the webinar will receive a recording uh, in the next couple of days uh, via email. Um, so just so you know that. Um, secondly, we will have some time for questions in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of the webinar today. You can ask questions in the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, and we will try to get to as many as possible. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to everyone, but we will try to get to as many as possible. So please ask uh, the questions. and. Uh, we'll get back to them later. Um, finally, there will be, at the end of today's webinar or when you leave, uh, a short survey will pop up. Uh, it's literally, it, take, it takes 30 seconds to fill out. It helps us to gain your feedback of how the webinar went and uh, will help us to improve uh, our webinars in the future. So uh, if you can take just a few moments to uh, fill this out at the end of the webinar today. One second. Okay. Uh, our two presenters today, um, we're going to actually start with Sid Narang, who's a sales engineer at BlazeMeter. Um, and then we are going to turn things over later on to Dominic Lucia, who's a solutions, solutions engineer, excuse me, at Sauce Labs. Um, so uh, with that said, I think the present, presentations will be interesting and practical for you. I'm going to turn things over now to uh, Sid Narang and he will take over from here. Perfect, thanks Jason. Perfect, uh, so thanks everyone for joining uh, this second part of our two series, uh, two series webinar today. Uh, my name is Sid Narang, I'm a sales engineer out of our headquarter office in Palo Alto, California. Uh, like Jason had said, this is going to be related to the automation of testing, and for my specific use case today, this will be relevant to the performance side. Uh, just kind of the overview of what I'll be going through today, I'll go over some slides and I'll go through a demo as well, and then I'll pass it on to Dom from Sauce Labs and he'll talk about the automation and the functional testing side. One of the things that we're seeing here at BlazeMeter is that there's a whole new era for performance testing. A lot of people are recognizing the need for high performing applications. A lot of companies are, are looking for that. Uh, and performance and low testing has risen in prominence again as we enter continuous integration and we enter continuous delivery as well. Uh, overall, this idea, the webinar will basically be discussing three main things. Uh, the uh, first being that since there is an era of CI and CD, BlazeMeter can help you with the automation of your performance test. Uh, now with automation testing, it's important to get also a, a lot of quality from that automation as well, right? Which automating, we need to ensure that we're getting value from that automation. And I'll show you some examples today of how you can automate your performance test, how you can dig a lot deeper and figure out really where the bottlenecks and all that information are relevant to that test and how we can access it. Uh, next we'll be setting thresholds. These automated thresholds basically ensuring that your bills or your tests, they only fa fail based on certain criteria. For an example, let's say you run a performance test and you pretty much set that if it ever gets beyond a certain response time, let's say for an example, three seconds or something, uh, if it ever goes beyond that, that would actually mean that the test has failed. Oh, sorry, it looks like uh, my audio cut off, so sorry about that. Uh, if it does ever do that again, I'll call through the through the landline. But uh, what I was referring to was adding the capability of adding these thresholds. So uh, the only reason you would fail the test would be based on a certain uh, specific threshold that you've set. 
Uh, the last is the backbone of automation. Uh, a lot of uh, companies are already leveraging CI to do bills, to do uh, deployments, all of that information has already been set up. All those processes have already been set up. So today we'll basically show you how you can use your Jenkins instance and CI frameworks to set up an entirely integrated process where if you do make changes to your code, you can actually trigger a performance test as well. Okay, so let's kind of start out by understanding a couple of things here. Uh, really why continuous testing is so important, why this automation testing is so important for nowadays. Uh, and the reason behind this, and I'll cover this very quickly, is that we've been talking to a lot of our clients and our customers across the board, and continuous delivery, continuous integration has become the new normal, right? Because if you're software, as a service company, even if you're not, you're making lots and lots of changes to your application, you're rapidly updating, you're an agile shop as well. Um, so there is, uh, the world of software development has been moving rapidly, but the world of automation in terms of testing has not, right? And that's been the biggest pain point that we've seen uh, in terms of this continuous delivery process is the automation in terms of testing isn't really there. Uh, the advantage of testing throughout your processes and, and early on as well is that over time you're going to get lots and lots of tests and if you're doing them manually what's going to happen is it's going to increase the time it takes for you to release right and the quality as well will, uh, will lower because of the fact that you're spending more time trying to test instead of you trying to make changes to that application. Looks like I'm back, sorry about that guys. Uh, apologize for that delay. Um, so the reason behind this is that with the automation, um, with manual testing, it's going to uh, increase the time it takes for you to release. Um, really with automation, that's going to simplify that process and also lower the time it takes for you to do all that uh, testing as well. Okay, a couple of other things as well. Um, the reason why we're seeing this uh, and, and there's been a slowdown in terms of that is because of the fact that testing is not simple, right? It is complicated um, and especially automated testing, right? Automation isn't complicated in terms of testing. So when we talk to our customers, really start to dig a little bit deeper and figure out why exactly they're not doing automated testing, the reason is, is the solutions that they're using were never built for that, right? They're old GUI products. They're not really built for automation, if you were to make changes to your application or changes to your test code, uh, it requires you to use a GUI product, right, which is not really ideal when you do want to simplify the way you write your test. So we saw this as a big problem, right, and we saw that even if you wanted to test a single API or a single request, that would require you to get into a specific product, and this could be, for an example, it could be JMeter, it could be Gatling, Grindr, Locust, and that would basically put you in a GUI-based product and you would have to write the test, for it, the test script from there. So what we did was uh, we took this problem and we came out with a solution. And the solution, if you guys have heard about it, this is called Blaze Meter Taurus. Um, so we've been rapidly investing in making this uh, prominent within organizations, within companies using it. Um, so if you guys have also seen previous webinars from, Bla from Blaze Meter, We've talked a lot about Taurus. We've talked about how it can integrate rapidly within whatever you have currently in place. Uh, I won't go into too much detail on what Taurus is. I just kind of want to introduce it and explain how it can fit in your uh, automate uh, CI frameworks and how you can use it to automate your performance test. But the simple answer here of what Taurus really is, is that it's a framework that makes it simple for you to write your test scripts and to run your test scripts as well. Right? And the best part is, it's open source, it supports other open source tools as well. So if you already have JMeter, Gatling, Grinder, or Locust, you can actually you reuse these scripts and use Taurus as kind of the underlying agent to run these scripts. Okay, so how does this solve that puzzle? Uh, this is kind of the four things that will be put out there within the puzzle today. Um, the first being Jenkins, right? So Jenkins is the awesome CI tool which 
if you're not using Jenkins, it's fine. There's other CI tools as well, and that integrates as well. Um, Today we'll be focusing on Jenkins itself, but really what it will do is it will control the process in terms of the common user use case scenarios, right? It's, uh, basically Jenkins itself would be the trigger in terms of launching that performance test. Um, Taurus itself will be the underlying engine for the actual test scenarios and also the user success or failure criteria as well, right? So test scenarios, what I mean by that is um, you know, how many concurrent users would I, would I like to test for? Um, you know, how many, uh, what's the ramp up looking like? How long do I want the test to run for? All those are test scenarios, right? And the criteria can be, look, if the response time of a specific request is greater than a certain value, then we... Right, so that's kind of one way of using uh, the Taurus portion of it is to set those criteria up. Uh, we'll use JMeter technology in which we'll be sending those HTTP requests uh, and the last will be obviously the website right and the website itself will be performance tested it'll send some raw responses to JMeter Taurus itself will take that information analyze it and see if for an example have those criteria has been met uh, and also it will be based on the reporting purposes so Taurus actually leverages blaze meter for the reporting purposes as well so that's kind of what I'll show you during the workflow today on how you can use Jenkins with Taurus and run a performance test and have that be automated as well, right? And the automation really comes in when Jenkins passes or fails your build. So I'll actually show you examples of when a performance test has failed in Jenkins due to the fact that some sort of criteria, some threshold has, been, has failed. Okay, so... What this is ultimately doing is um, we've seen a lot of companies and a lot of organizations uh, previously as well is that performance testing and any sort of testing is really done in the production state. It's done all the way in the right here where uh, you've written your application, you then write and run a performance uh, test itself. So it's always been done much later in the process, right? because of the fact that it's really complicated to use the tools that are already in place, right? So with Taurus and with the fact that we're using open source, right, it's basically a DevOps approach that we're taking here. Uh, we now can test performance at an earlier stage. So as early as when you write new code, you can quickly spin up a performance test. Um, you can also performance test at every build as well and at every deployment going forward. Right, so instead of you testing at the later stage, you can now move that and shift left to the much earlier stage in your development cycle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch to a quick demo, and this demo itself will show you Jenkins, will show you Taurus as well, uh, and I'll show you some examples of why it's so complicated in making changes to uh, some of the GUI-based tools that you currently are using already. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you this script here. This is an awful script, right? And what the script is, this is actually a JMeter script in an XML format. And I'll be honest with you, this is a 100 plus line script, right? You can see there's a lot of information on here. It's almost not readable, right? For a normal human being, there's a lot of information here. Not really sure what exactly it's doing. And I'll tell you what it's doing. It's actually just one single request that this JMeter is hitting, right? So this is it, one request, about 120 lines or so. And just so I was, you know, trying to be honest here, so I wasn't lying, this is a request, this is the same JMeter script, but I added three more requests to it. This is 400 lines, right? So the only way you're gonna make changes to the script itself will be through JMeter. There's no real other possibility in making those changes. You would have to go into your JMeter GUI or your other open source tool, Gatling Grinder, and from there on out make those changes, right? Because here, with 400 lines, you wouldn't be able to make, uh, un basically understand what is going on here. Instead, what Taurus does is that it uses YAML, it uses JSON as, as well, and this specific script, this is one script that's hitting two endpoints, right? So the XML and JMeter would have been about lines or so, uh, we're adding some information on here as well, the execution steps on how, uh, how long we want the test to run for, what exactly is the concurrency here as well. Uh, and you can see this is only about 23, 25 lines, 
right? So much simpler, simpler to handle. Uh, you can make quick changes to the script as well, right? So for an example, right now I have ramp up to be 120 seconds. Maybe I just want to lower this number to 90 seconds, right? And what I'm doing now is I'm making changes to the script. I've also added a specific um, uh, criteria that if that home page, which is my blazedemo.com site, if it ever gets beyond 750 milliseconds, basically this is a fail in my eyes, and in Jenkins this would actually fail the test as well. Right, so what I'll do now is I've made the change, right, simply made the change. I didn't have to use JMeter or any other tool. I didn't have to use a heavy base GUI tool. I'm in my own command line. Pretty much I'm using Sublime, right. I made changes to my script itself. Uh, the good thing is this actual file is located in my GitHub repository. So what I can do now is I can commit this change and GitHub will basically uh, see that I've made that change that look, uh, the ramp up has gone down. Go ahead and write that, commit that code to my GitHub. And what I'll do now is I'll go into my Jenkins instance, right? And you can see this is a specific project that I'm working on. And I just kicked off a test from that specific integration here itself, right? Just from making those changes to the YAML file, right? All I did was I wanted the ramp up to be a little bit different. I didn't have to use a heavy base GUI product for that. And this is me making changes to my specific test script, right? Obviously the same can be done when you make changes to your application and on at the code level as well. That would trigger a test within Jenkins itself just to show you how this is exactly set up so you know exactly what I'm referring to. Uh, within Jenkins, basically I created a project, I pointed it to my GitHub repository, right? From there on out, I used my GitHub as a source code management as well. And the last thing that I did was that I used Taurus to run this performance test in Jenkins, right? So Taurus uses BZT, that's uh, Blaze Meter Taurus, that's the command that you would run it against and all we're doing is we're running the test YAML file that I just made changes to. Okay, and there's obviously some other information that I've added. That's just for kind of demo reasons, so it's easier on the eyes. But all I did was I triggered the test when I made changes to that test script itself. Right? And if I were to go back to that specific test that's running, okay, and I can go ahead and go to the console output. You can see there's some information on here. It's pulling that data from GitHub. There's also some data that's being fed into BlazeMeter, right? And as I've stated, BlazeMeter is kind of the reporting engine that Taurus will be using. So as you can see here, um, this itself is a report in BlazeMeter. You're able to see exactly what's happening within this performance test itself. Uh, if you've seen BlazeMeter uh, webinars before or any BlazeMeter demo before, you can see that we have great ways of you correlating this information, right? So you have ways of doing that. And this is exactly where we get to the point of quality automation, right? Is yes, you want to automate, but you want to have the deeper knowledge going forward as well of why things are happening and how you can go beyond debugging that and figuring out uh, within that frame itself. So within our reporting, you'll be able to leverage that. Um, just simply kick off a test. This will send out a report to BlazeMeter and you can use our reporting engines for that specific purpose just to kind of show you as well how the thresholds work. So this test is still running. It'll take a couple of minutes as well. Uh, if I show you a previous, and you can see I have a lots and lots of fails because I kept on adding these thresholds. Uh, if you see this last test that I ran, uh, this was a fail, right? And the reason it was a fail was because uh, we actually tell you the exact reason as well, is because of the fact that that uh, average response time, which was put in my YAML file, of that home page was greater than 750 milliseconds, right? So this is basically telling us the reasons on why that test is failing. And if you wanted to dig a little bit deeper, you can do that within that blaze meter report itself, right? So you can set up these multiple criteria. That what, that's what Tor is gonna really allow you to do is you can set up these criteria. You can use it as sort of the engine that's running that performance test. You can quickly make changes to your YAML script as well so that it's not using a very complex tool to make these changes, right? We're trying to simplify that approach so that if you do want to make quick changes uh, and you don't want to wait till your application's in production, you can do that, and that's by using our, our Taurus framework itself.
Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll go back into kind of the, uh, the specific presentation, kind of just sum it up as well, uh, and then I'll hand it off to Dom from Sauce Labs who will talk about the functional part. So three things that we talked about today. One is the quality automation, right? So it's great that now we have a way to automate our performance test, but we do want to get quality and information out of that as well. So the great thing is with Blaze Meter, think of us as a repository for your performance test in terms of the reporting. So what you can do is you can send out a report to Blaze Meter. Uh, we'll harness all that data for you. We'll make sense out of it as well. And when you do run multiple tests over time, you'll start understanding the trends as well, right? So you do get the automation part of it, but you do get the information relevant to the test as well. Uh, next is the thresholds. As you saw, the response times was kind of the criteria that I was using to fail or uh, fail my test, which would fail the build in Jenkins. That's what Taurus will allow you to do. You can set up these multiple thresholds and criteria. And from there on out, you can have a fully automated process. And the last thing is, I kicked off my test within CI itself. So the great thing is, if you're already using CI, if you already have that built out like Jenkins, uh, you can pretty much set and add performance testing to that framework uh, and trigger performance tests from there. Okay, so just to wrap it up, uh, create your own account. We, you know, offer a free account with Blaze Meter if you want to know more about our performance testing strategies. Obviously, we didn't get into the full strategy here. This was just a high-level overview. But if you want to know the full strategy, definitely check out our blogs and our knowledge base. Uh, you can also learn some more information about Taurus. It's called gettaurus.org. It is an open source framework, but it's it's something that we're heavily invested in and we're the, we're the main owners of that project. Uh, and also, if you guys are in the Bay Area, we will be in Jenkins World. Same thing with Sauce Labs as well. Um, so if you want, you can check us out and we can get into a deeper level discussion on how we can help with your performance testing needs within CI itself. So with that, I'll transition over to Dom. I'll give him access uh, and he will discuss really the automation within functional testing itself. Dom, I'll make you the presenter and uh, the floor is yours. All righty. Thanks much, Sid. Um, Sid and Jason, can you guys hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. We can. So you're, you're good to awesome. Mind. Great. So uh, my name is Dominic Lucia, and thank you, Sid, for uh, that awesome demo with Blaze Meter. Um, I know a lot of customers that we talk to always have questions about performance testing, and um, Blaze Meter is a, a fantastic tool that Sauce Labs likes to partner with frequently. So um, in the same way, you know, Blaze Meter integrates nicely with CI and Jenkins CI in particular, um, so does Sauce Labs. So this is kind of a part two uh, continuing on from a webinar we did a few weeks ago. Uh, when we send out the, the recordings, um, we're going to send out the recordings from both the webinar a couple of weeks ago and today's webinar. So if there's any context you feel like you're missing, uh, you can feel free to review the old recording. Um, as a quick reminder, uh, why do we do functional testing? So Soft Lab is all about functional front-end testing. And as a reminder, we do front-end testing, uh, we do functional testing, so we make sure stuff works, right? And here are three examples of some uh, very high-profile, quite embarrassing examples where maybe the QA team or the test team didn't quite get their jobs done. Um, make sure that your stuff works before you ship it out to customers, right? So um, we have to make sure that it, it performs quickly, but we have to make sure that that you know, little corner of your app that you might not have fully tested um, also works so that when people go to use it, um, it gets going and, and works just fine. So the three things that you want to know specifically about automation and automation in the CI environment is you want to do, uh, you want to have quality automation. Um, when you're going to scale out your automation and you go from testing manually to testing a wide variety of pieces and features of your application, and you're testing very frequently, and you're testing on every code release and uh, every um, 
every pull request, you're going to generate a lot of test data, a lot of test data. So when you go to do that, if you're running, you know, maybe you have a system where you manually run your regression test once a week. Um, think about scaling out to running a thousand tests a day, and over the course of a week, that's seven thousand tests. And then you know you can see over a month and a year, um, if you have a lot of false positives and and garbage data in your test, it's going to be extremely difficult to tease out what's useful from um, what you just need to ignore. So really focus on quality automation. Um, in our world of automation, you want to make sure that you have what we call autonomous and atomic tests. So I'll get to that specifically in a minute, but really quickly, autonomous means that the tests don't rely on each other. So uh, test two does not need test one in order to run, because what happens if test one fails? Um, then you'll have test two fail when maybe test two, the feature that it's testing, is really just fine. Now you're going to think that that feature maybe is or is not, I don't know. Um, atomic tests. So atomic literally means uh, that which you cannot cut any further. So you want to test one feature at a time. You want to test the smallest piece that you can at a time. And you want to test it in the simplest possible way. And that first sounds like it's kind of a daunting task if you're used to having, you know, big monolithic manual testing suites. But um, you know, the, the testing geniuses here at Sauce Labs always have a way around that, and always have ways that we can help you get to that that autonomous and atomic nirvana. And finally, um, you want a way to kind of corral all these crazy amounts of tests that you're going to run. You want to make sure that everything makes sense and that this mountain of data that you're compiling is going to be useful. Again, eliminating false failures and getting good data is one, but organizing that data is just as important. And you know, if, if you think about big data and all those really exciting problems that are going on today with big data, uh, you don't want your test environment to turn into a big data nightmare. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about how you can use Jenkins to kind of keep everything in order. Again, uh, just like Sid mentioned with BlazeMeter, uh, BlazeMeter has really great interactions and integrations with uh, various CI tools. And if you go to the, uh, the Sauce Labs website, you see that we support all the major CI tools, uh, such as Bamboo and, and Travis. So um, this is specifically to Jenkins, but you know, especially because we have the, the run up to Jenkins world, but um, there are other integrations that we do just fine. So what are atomic and autonomous testing specifically? Again, test a single feature and make it as short and succinct as possible. Uh, it's very simple, but in practice, it can actually be a little bit complicated. Um, autonomous, and this is something that we see a lot of times when you have basically what was a legacy manual test case that has been translated into an automated script. Um, that's where you can get autonomous tests that, that are not autonomous, uh, tests that rely on each other, tests that are, are relying on integration from other tests, and it can be um, ultimately a very, very fragile system. So uh, that's something that we, we help a lot of customers kind of get out of that bind when we go out into the marketplace. So um, specifically, what is an atomic test look like? So a non-atomic test, well, this is at the top here, and um, given I'm logged in with account one, I send an email to account one with subject and body, and I wait. So there's a lot of things going on here, right? So I'm testing, um, I, given I'm logged in, okay, but, and I send an email. So you're testing the, sending an email before you even get to the thing that you think you're trying to test. You're supposed to be testing a, a search by subject, right? So let's not also test the, um, the email sending. So that's no good. Um, how would you do that properly? Well, 
if we have access via an API POST command, let's go ahead and just populate that email into the system, and now we know it's there. We're not going to be testing that functionality. We're just going to populate it. And so the actual test comes when you go to search for that email. So that's much better. That's a, a great example of an atomic test that we can all relate to. So what about autonomous? Okay, so here we have our, our first test case, um, API post command. Okay, that looks all great. It looks like we're just doing one thing. We're just you know, searching for that email that's been populated uh, from the, the last example, so that looks good. Um, but now let's look at test two. So given I am logged in with account one and I delete all the messages in my inbox, well, where did those messages come from? Well, they came from test one. Well, what if test one failed? And that means that test two is always going to fail. So you don't have any way to test test two, the delete email function, without first getting through test one. So you could have, and that's a great example of where you could have a false failure where uh, maybe the developer that works on the delete function can see his test fail and there not actually be anything wrong with that feature. It's just that the test previous um, was written to set up the second test. So that's an example of a non-autonomous test. So how would we do that? Again, we would want to use something that's kind of back end via an API post command. I'm going to populate account two with emails, and then I'm going to delete them and then verify that you have no emails. So that's a great example of let's use an out of band back end process in order to make sure that we have a nice autonomous test that doesn't rely on test one. So back in our, our previous webinar, um, I talked about cloning your own robot army. And instead of you know, sitting there and um, clicking through and running one thing at a time, if you have good automation, and again, these things are all autonomous and atomic, then you can test feature one in multiple different OSs over multiple different browsers and feature two and feature three all at the same time. So you can test while you sleep, right? So you've got all these nice little robots here and they're all testing things for you, but how do you wrangle your robot army? Well, we're gonna do that through Jenkins and we're gonna do that um, as an example I'm going to give through a, what we see as a typical build pipeline. So we're gonna start with the devs who will um, check out code, maybe you know, write some code on a new feature, maybe they're looking at a bug fix, um, and they're gonna check out from the, the Git repository, which I'm gonna kind of mirror in my, uh, in my demo later. We're gonna go ahead and code and perform unit tests locally. And we're gonna commit the code and ideally those unit tests to the repo. So sufficient number of commits will trigger a build and you can see here Jenkins is that which controls all this. And we're gonna deploy that build in order to be tested on a test dev server. Now as an optional aside, if we have a separate um, maybe SCT or uh, QA team that writes functional Selenium tests, um, we can also code those locally and commit those to the repo. And then once that happens, Jenkins is going to interface the soft labs and pull those tests and, the, and that code down from the repo and deploy those tests into sauce labs. So sauce is going to spin up the browser device combinations and test your app against all these different things, again, all at the same time, all nice and parallelized. And then once that's done, um, Sauce Labs captures all of the assets, and that's the videos, the log files, all the screenshots, so that you can really quickly see what's happening with your feature, see if it's working or not, and stores that in our cloud server to be looked at by your test team. Finally, um, what's great about the Sauce Labs Jenkins plugin is you actually have access to all of those assets through Jenkins. 
So a lot of times you see, um, you can kind of get into what I call a dashboard overload where you know, there are various dashboards that you need to keep track of and it's nice sometimes to just be able to go back to a tool that you know and see Jenkins, okay, I'm just gonna go to Jenkins, that's where everything's stored and I'm gonna go and see my test results and um, optionally get access to those assets. And setting up Jenkins to control Sauce um, can, you know, if you ha already have Sauce running in your environment, uh, Jenkins is very, very easy to configure. Um, it's listed in the, the plugin repository, so you literally just go into manage plugins, search for Sauce, and then configure the plugin. Um, you want to make sure that you give it access to your Sauce credentials which I'll show you how I have that configured. Um, if you have a shared Jenkins environment, you don't want to just list your credentials in clear text. So um, I'll really quickly touch on how to do that, how to store those securely in your credential store. And then you want to be able to make sure that it has access to your test scripts as well. Um, and then once that's done, make sure to configure your triggers so that when things change in the way that you want it to trigger, um, that trigger will actually be sent to Jenkins and to Sauce to actually run those tests. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the demo. So this is again my Sauce Labs dashboard. Um, I've been running some tests in preparation for this webinar. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come over here and I have a very, very simple test. Um, in our last webinar, we showed exactly what that test did. It tested blazedemo.com, and um, I'm going to be simulating if the product manager just, or the product owner walked over and said, hey, um, you know, the, the business has decided that we wanna always test on the latest version of Firefox in Windows 10. So because Sauce Labs understands how to do how to parse these um, desired capabilities, we can just request, okay, I want Windows 10, Firefox latest. And so by adding a single line of code, and obviously uh, best practices would be to break this out into its own file. Um, this for demo purposes is just a single monolithic file with the test and the capabilities all in the same place. But um, by adding a single line of code here, I can actually go ahead now and every time this runs, um, every time the feature needs to be tested, it's now also going to be tested against Firefox latest. So I went ahead and I saved that. And just as, as Sid had discussed, um, you can see here that it's connected to my GitHub and you can see um, that the new browser string has been added. So add Windows 10, Firefox latest. This is now going to sync up to my GitHub account in the cloud, which is then going to send a webhook call over to our Jenkins server. So you can see here, this is our Jenkins server that we have set up um, for our internal testing here at Sauce for my team. And you can see that my, my build has already been scheduled to come in here and, uh, and start going. So I'm gonna click on this build and you can see that it's dutifully building. Just as Sid showed, um, you can see the console output where it's now running the tests, uh, 40 tests at a time. So I'm gonna return back to my Sauce Labs dashboard and see that in fact, all of these tests are being automatically run. In our new interface, um, you can see that this is the welcome to the new interface optimized for CI. This is supposed to be very familiar to anybody who kind of lives their life in that Jenkins environment. So we have, under automated builds, this is the build that I just started. So it looks like I have a number of failures here. Um, so I would be able to go now and click on this test 
and see what about this build or what about this browser has failed to pass this test. But what if I didn't have Sauce Labs access? Perhaps Jenkins had its own account um, and Jenkins was the only, the only entity that had access to Sauce Labs. But what I can do is I can go back here and you can see that the video and the logs are all accessible right here through Jenkins. So I can click, okay, looks like that Firefox base actually failed. So we have the report. We access all the same things that we can through the Sauce Labs website. We can actually access it right here in Jenkins. So you don't actually have to go back to the Sauce Labs dashboard um, to see all your work and, and see how everything is, is passing or failing. You also have links to download the video or the logs here. So you can just right click and save link as to download the video and, and send that over to the developer in the future and say, hey, you know, this is what's not, not working. You can attach that to your artifact in JIRA. Um, it's all you know, very integrated here nicely. So really quickly, this is all it takes to configure your Sauce Labs Jenkins test. Um, <clears throat> as I said here, this is my Git account. So I have my credentials stored, and that would be up here in, in Jenkins under credentials. So everything is centrally you know, located and, and scrambled so that you don't have access to that if you do have access to Jenkins. Um, I'm using my GitHub credentials. I'm connecting to my GitHub repo. And then build when the change is passed to GitHub. So every time there's a new change on GitHub, I go ahead and have that connected to Jenkins and, and built and tested. Um, the other options that we have here are these are my credentials to Sauce Labs. So that's the way that it dials actually into Sauce to start those tests. And that's why we saw those tests running on my dashboard here. And we even have the ability to automatically configure Sauce Connect. So for those of you running tests behind a firewall or in a private environment, um, the Jenkins server can actually bring up that Sauce Connect tunnel on the fly every time it needs to start a test. So that's a really nice integration there so that we can go ahead and test behind the firewall. And with that, um, that concludes kind of the, the sneak peek into the Jenkins and Sauce Labs environment. And I will go ahead and pass it back off to Jason who will start to take questions. Okay, just one second, everybody. Okay, uh, thank you to Dom, uh, thank you to both presenters, to Sid Narang and to Dominic Lucia uh, for their engaging and uh, important presentations. Uh, we do have time now for some questions. Um, I saw a few coming in. I'm going to uh, read them out, uh, the ones that I think are the most topical and most valuable to the audience. Um, and then Dom and Sid, if you can uh, chime in. Uh, also remember to unmute yourselves uh, if you are going to answer. So just hold on one second while I take a look. Um, hold on. Sid, there was a question about uh, authentic, is high as authentication required for Taurus or is it, does it just generate some link and make it available for some time for everybody? Sure. So uh, Taurus itself is open source. So if you go to gettaurus.org, uh, you can actually download it locally on your, your laptop or whatever machine you're using. Uh, once you have access to that local machine, you have access to Taurus. Uh, the only authentication that you would provide would be if you do want some sort of reporting, uh, you can sign up for a BlazeMeter account. That BlazeMeter account will give you an API key. That API key will attach your Taurus test that you run locally 
to that Blaze Meter account so that you can get some sort of reporting. That's kind of the only authentication needed to, to leverage that product. Okay. Um, Dom, there was a question that came in while you were presenting. Uh, maybe you can, I'll give the presentation uh, credentials back to you, but somebody asked how you got the video links on the Jenkins jobs. Do you think we have time to show that now? or? Um, that should be something that, um, yeah, I don't think we quite have enough time to do that. Um, but, you know, if somebody wants to reach out to me, my name is just, or my email is just dom at sauce labs. And, uh, I'd be perfectly happy to, to set up a one-on-one -on -one and uh, send you some documentation. Um, it, it's a little bit, it's pretty automatic, but, um, you just have to take a few boxes for it to actually come up. Okay. And uh, just uh, we have another question here about Sauce Labs. Is it possible to install, configure Chrome or Firefox extensions to test them with Sauce Labs? Yes, absolutely. Um, that is something that I believe is covered in our wiki. But um, we cover that by using our pre-run executables, which runs executable files before a test. So. Uh, before the test is run, uh, the VM is instantiated, and then you run your pre-run executable, and then that would set up your environment to you however you'd like to, to have it set in order to run your test. Okay, thank you. Sid, um, we have a question here where somebody asked how network, how does network latency affect performance measurement with BlazeMeter? Sure, so uh, when you do run a performance test, um, let's say you run it locally, you're not going to really get any sort of latency because that's uh, if you're not running it locally, you're not really getting that sort of uh, network latency added to your test. Uh, with BlazeMeter, we actually allow you to run distributed performance tests. So I didn't actually show that today because I showed it from one specific local location. But same thing with Taurus, same thing with BlazeMeter, you can run a test distributed and what happens is when you do run that test, you will get those network latencies around the world, uh, and those will affect some sort of uh, you know KPIs such as response time and, and hits and all those. Um, so when you do want to keep make it as realistic as possible, we can support it. Just know that's that's how we would uh, run that distributed test for you. Okay, great. And while you're still there, also. Um... Somebody just basically asked very simply if BlazeMeter has a Jenkins plugin. The answer is yes, but I'll just let you expand on that aside for a minute. Sure. So I didn't cover that plugin today. We actually went through uh, Jenkins itself and went through kind of the GitHub and, and, and build steps from there. But if you're a BlazeMeter user, you just, just know you don't have to do what I showed you today. I know it's kind of weird in that sense, but BlazeMeter does have a Jenkins plugin. So if you want to leverage what you've done already, you can use Jenkins itself and that plugin, just like Dom had showed for Sauce Labs. We do have a built-in plugin. You just search for BlazeMeter. From there on out, you can actually integrate your profile over. Um, so that's one step of doing it. Obviously, you can use the Taurus route as well. But yes, if you are using BlazeMeter and already have your repo set up like that, just search for that BlazeMeter plugin and download it. You're good to go. OK, great. A uh, couple of questions for, for Dominic. Um, one of them was, I believe this is for you, what was if you do testing on browsers on mobile devices? Yes, absolutely. Um, not only do we do testing on browsers and mobile devices, but um, we actually recommend that you test on browsers, mobile devices, and on emulators and simulators. So emulators, simulators are um, the Android and iOS words, uh, respectively, for virtual devices. And you actually can get much higher reliability in your tests by using those virtual devices. Um, you do want a mix of both real and emulated devices, but for the bulk of your testing and the bulk of your bug, uh, bug catching, you actually do want to run in those um, emulated devices. They're a lot more reliable. Okay, great. And another question, um, will the Sauce Labs plugin automatically show the number of pass-fail, uh, the pass-fail results in Jenkins? You do have to do a little bit of bookkeeping to make sure that the reporting uh, goes from the 
you know, basically when you report to Sauce Labs, uh, this is what passes the test, this is what fails the test, um, the Jenkins plugin will automatically reflect that in Jenkins. Okay. Um, I have a few more questions here. One of them is just, uh, I think it's general that any of you can answer, but um, I think it was touched upon a little bit, but there are a few tools mentioned today in the webinar today. Somebody asked, is, is everything open source or enterprise? I don't know if it means commercial or, um, but I know that definitely Taurus is open source. Um, Sid, I don't know if you want to just mention, answer a little bit more. Sure. So uh, the tools that I used were uh, Taurus. I used uh, GitHub as well. And I used Jenkins. So all those are open source. The only one that is uh, the reporting side of BlazeMeter. But everything you saw today uh, was pretty much open source up until the point where you get to the fact that you want to see the reporting of your performance test. So. And on the Sauce Lab side, um, Sauce Labs is based on Selenium and Appium. So those are both open source, but you know, obviously our, our Selenium Appium cloud is, um, you know, that is a subscription based model, but uh, everything else that you saw is, you know, with, as, as Sid mentioned with Jenkins and with GitHub, um, those are all open source. Okay. A uh, couple of questions for Sid about BlazeMeter um, and Taurus. Um, one of them was, does Taurus work best for API endpoint testing or can it be configured for session-based for session -based user scenarios? Sure, the answer is both. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. It can be, it can be API testing, uh, but it does handle very complex scenarios as well. Um, it, there's a kind of limit. It depends on kind of how well you can write it in the YAML file, but just know we, it can support both. Uh, so if you've written a very complex JMeter script before, don't worry. That's something that can be done as well. Just know that you would have to write it in the YAML file. So, you know, there's a there's kind of a, a, a trade-off here. It depends on how complex you want to write the YAML file. If you aren't comfortable with that, you could still use it in JMeter as well. So, and the good thing about Taurus is it actually runs the JMeter script as well. So you, instead of you instructing it to hit a specific endpoint, you can actually just run that JMeter script uh, from there. So think of it as sort of an engine that runs it and uh, can hold up the sort of scenario values as well. Okay. Um, somebody just asked, I'll, I'll, Sid, I'll ask you another one in, the question, in a second, but does somebody else ask, ask if there's any webinars planned for using Taurus um, and BlazeMeter together? We've done a few. Uh, you can find, I'll give a link in a moment when we close out the webinar, but uh, if you go to blazemeter.com slash resources, you can see links to the recording of all our webinars, and we've covered Taurus and BlazeMeter quite a bit, um, and we will do more in the future. Uh, Sid, uh, does BlazeMeter have any integration with test data creator tool or tools suggested? Uh, not specifically. Uh, the, kind of the integrations that we're built on in terms of the test data creator, in that sense, will be... Uh, the scripting tools in that sense. So if you are using JMeter, Gatlink, Grinder, Locust, even uh, like Selenium, we can integrate with those. So that's kind of how, uh, for the performance testing side, those are the tools that we can help out with. So. Okay. Um, and uh, just somebody had asked a question about technology coverage for Taurus. I think the best way to get to see all the documentation and integrations and technology is probably to go to gettaurus.org. Um, I'll show that uh, link on the screen in a second as well. A uh, question sure. about Sauce Labs for Dom. Um, how many real mobile devices are in Sauce Labs and emulators? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. Um, we're adding, we actually just really ramped up the pace that we're adding real devices. Um, if you go to saucelabs.com, I think it's just saucelabs.com slash platforms. Um, that will actually tell you about all of our virtual platforms, um, both browser and the uh, simulated mobile. And then as far as our real device coverage, uh, there's a link there from the platforms, and um, that's actually just saucelabs.com slash devices, and, uh, and that will tell you um, the current real devices. And like I said, uh, really, just over the past couple of months, I've seen a, a huge uptick in the pace at which we're adding both a number and breadth of devices. 
Okay. Um, is Taurus wrapped over both selenium and J meter? Say that, I guess uh, that. The answer, yeah. If you're doing performance testing, think of it sort of as um, as a um, art of not an artificial, but yeah. The answer is yes. So you can actually run your J meter test using Taurus, like I'd stated. Um, same thing for selenium if you're doing performance testing. So uh, a little bit different, but yes, um, we do support those other tools as well. Okay, a uh, question for, for Dominic. Um, how can we configure Jenkins with Sauce Labs Connect to get the, the test executed on the dashboard after execution with results, logs, and links? I don't know if that's a in detail question, but if you, if you wanted to, if there's a short answer. Yeah, so um, I assume that, that you're talking about Sauce Connect Proxy, which is how we test in behind firewalls and into um, private test dev environments that aren't exposed to the internet. Um, so that's just kind of stepping right through that Jenkins, um, that Jenkins checkbox that I showed you where there's a subsection on Sauce Connect and a place where you can put in uh, Sauce Connect credentials and everything else. Um, that way, the, the Jenkins server itself will end up also being the Sauce Connect server. Um, but there's multiple different ways to implement Sauce Connect, so that's definitely something that you can ask your solutions engineer. Um, you know, there's a lot of really great articles on our wiki as well. Um, and again, feel free to reach out to me, Dom at SauceLabs.com. Um, you know, that depending on the environment, it's really going to be what dictates your um, your soft connect setup so it, it's dependent on the environment okay uh, I think we'll just take one more question uh, said so I'll, I'll leave it for you I know we didn't get to every single question but we did receive every one uh, we'll try to send an email response um, if possible um, but I'll just ask one more question now because we're running out of time um, so somebody asked, can BlazeMeter be used for main frame, mainframe performance testing? They say they, they use the Jenkins plugins to kick off ZOS JCL jobs that run on the mainframe. Uh, specifically, we'd probably have to take a deeper look into this question. Um, so if you guys want, you can send me an email, say.blazemeter.com, uh, short and simple. Um, I'm not exactly sure yet, so I think the best way to do it would be to have some sort of communication going forward. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so once again, thank you to the two presenters today, uh, Dominic Lucia and, and Sid Narang from BlazeMeter. Um, I'm just gonna give a few links just before uh, I do, just a reminder, uh, to, if you can take 30 seconds to fill out the survey that's gonna pop up in a moment uh, when the webinar ends or as you're leaving, it'll just help us uh, to, um, to gain your feedback and make the webinars even better. Uh, and secondly, yes, in answer for those who have asked, and I've said it before, though, you will receive a full recording uh, of today's webinar and also, um, as Dominic mentioned, of the previous uh, webinar as well, which was um, talking about backend and, and front-end testing. So just a few links to give you. Hold on a second. Uh, for more information and to sign up for BlazeMeter, uh, you can go to www.blazemeter.com. I don't have here, but you can also, if you want more information about Sauce Labs, go to saucelabs.com. Uh, you can follow us at Twitter at BlazeMeter. Um, download JMeter. This, what, this webinar wasn't focused on JMeter too much. We do have a lot of JMeter focused webinars, but if you want to download JMeter, you can there. More info on Taurus and to install it is at gettaurus.org. Um, also, you'll want to go to our blog, the BlazeMeter blog, uh, for a lot of information about JMeter, Jenkins, load and performance testing, and CI, CD at blazemeter.com slash blog. Um, and uh, our resources page, I mentioned, has, a, has all of our webinar recordings to previous webinars as well. Uh, so I encourage everyone who is interested to check that out as well, blazemeter.com slash resources. And if there is an additional, any additional sales or demo requests about BlazeMeter specifically, please go to sales at blazemeter.com. Thank you very much uh, for attending today's webinar, everybody. Have a great day.